Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I have a very exciting video for you guys today. So major shout out to Flume or Solo, or whatever you wanna call them over on Discord for making all of the custom icons for this video. I made all of the stat sheets and recipe sheets. Together, I think we've come up with a lot of fantastic pieces of custom gear. So everyone thank them in the comment section for doing an amazing job on all the art pieces. Anyways, today's video is super exciting because I've come up with eight new custom endgame crafting gear that I think would be amazing additions to the game and if you guys want to possibly see any of these added make sure to leave a like on the video and also check feedback in Astral Studios over time because I might be putting some of these in the feedback channel so make sure you upvote them if they are popping up anyways these are going to be in order from difficulty of crafting from somewhat difficult to extraordinarily difficult and I would say the current binded energy of time and release energy of space are somewhat difficult to craft and yeah anyways let's get started so the first item I want to talk about is the cape of the stars this is a new armor they would require five fallen star fragments to craft and one a cape of pressure so not too bad to craft it is level 1300 plus like all the items in this video its attack is 150,000 it gives no crit 5 speed, 75 defense, and 1,500,000 HP. So this piece of gear is supposed to be the ultimate end game defensive HP armor. We really do not have anything like this in the game at the moment. There is the raiment armor piece that drops on EOT normal, but it, it makes you lose speed. And if you think about it, there really isn't anything beyond that. And I think this would be a great addition to the game because its crafting recipe is already very similar to stuff that's in the game. And plus, I think it would be very, very cool to have an ultimate HP defensive piece of armor so you can really become a very powerful party rune player, a very powerful protector, and overall I don't think this armor piece would break the game too much. Some of the later pieces of gear we're going to get into will be a lot more broken than this, but overall this recipe really isn't too bad and I do think the stats are very well rounded for a defensive player. And I really do love the icon that he made for it, it is fantastic. Anyways, the next piece of gear I want to talk about is the Cape of Endless Time. This is basically the opposite of the Cape of the Stars. So it requires 5 Fallen Time Fragments and 1 Cape of Pressure, so very similar recipe. And it does 1,500,000 attack, 75 crit, 5 speed, no defense, and 150,000 HP. So it is the exact opposite of the Cape of the Stars. It is the ultimate offensive piece of armor. So uh, the reason why I don't think this is too beyond broken is the fact that you're getting no defense and no HP, so you're sacrificing all of your survivability just for massive offensive game. And I can really see a lot of players using this with the current Havoc strategy, and I think it could be really, really fun to use because you really are sacrificing a lot of stats to get that much offense. And plus, with both of these armor pieces, you get choices in the endgame. Do you want to go for the ultimate defensive gear or do you want to go for the ultimate offensive gear? Both of these capes are very great additions to the game and I think it would let players truly optimize their roles a lot better. And I think the recipes are great because the cape of pressure is a hard item to get so it would make sense to have to use it in order to craft super powerful armor like this. Now let's get into the next piece of gear. This crafting recipe will be a little bit harder. This is the Aura of the Void. It requires one Nihility, three Lockets of Darkness, three Armors of the Void, and then five of that like Void Ring from EOT Normal. I forgot the name of it, it's on screen, but it isn't too hard to get, that's why there is five. So the Aura of the Void will give 500 attack, no crit, 15 speed, 25 defense, and 2500 HP, and will actually require max level to use. So the reason why the stats on this aren't ridiculous is because it is a aura. Auras aren't supposed to be broken as hell. But I do think this would be a fun addition to the game. It is pretty difficult to craft, but it is not insane to craft. And it would give players something to work at in EOT besides just binded and released. So the 15 speed and 25 defense are very, very nice on this. And this is supposed to be more of a defensive style aura. That is why it gives so much HP and defense and no crit. So this is supposed to be like the ultimate aura to use if you are a support player. And I think it would be a really good addition to the game because we really do need to get more auras that give really good stats. And I think something like this being difficult to craft would make sense. It would be really fun to work towards. 
So next, let's hop into an aura that I've already put into the feedback channel a couple of times. This is the ultimate aura. This will be very hard to craft, but I will go over why. So it requires one rogue hideout armor, one divine plate from nest, one tartarus armor, one crystal caverns armor, one frost dragon armor, one hive armor, one Dr. V lab armor, and the cape of pressure, and then the supernova aura, and the venom aura. So the reason why it requires one thing from pretty much every raid in the game from hardcore is so max level players have a reason to go back to the past raids besides just grinding fame and other random things like that. Not only would it give players something to do and bounce in between other things throughout the game, it also gives players an incentive to carry low levels through raids. Since you have to get one piece of hardcore armor from practically every raid in the game, it gives you an actual reason to go back and carry players who are leveling up through the game through these earlier raids. Now let's go over the stats because these stats are very very good. The attack is 1500, it gives 20 quit, 20 speed, 20 defense, and 1500 HP and requires max level. This is the ultimate aura as the name says, it gives great stats and I think this would be an amazing addition to the game just because it gives players that incentive to carry low levels and the stats really really do pay off. 20 crit and 20 speed on an aura is very powerful and I think this would be an amazing amazing addition to the game mainly just for that incentive to carry players through earlier raids. Now, the last couple pieces of gear in this video are going to be insanely difficult to craft and insanely OP. So first, I have Miner's Fruition. So the Miner's Fruition is something I absolutely love. It is incredibly difficult to craft. It is the ultimate offensive ring. It requires one pickaxe, three gauntlets of anticipation, ten gem dust, two fallen star fragments, and two fallen time fragments. And it is incredibly difficult to craft, and that's the point. It gives 2,500,000 attack, 125 crit, 20 speed, and then no defense and no HP. That is why it is so difficult to craft. And I thought the pickaxe would be very interesting because the pickaxe is currently not really used for anything, and I think it would be really fun to have it used for some ultimate crafting recipe. So this is the ultimate glass cannon ring. It gives you so much offense, but you're getting literally no HP so if you think about it it is very risky to use because you will become very vulnerable to pretty much any attack in the game although you're getting an amazing amount of offense for it and that's why I think this is a good addition to the game it is incredibly difficult to craft but it is like a pays off it is supposed to be incredibly difficult to craft like you get an amazing amount of stats for the difficulty of crafting and it will take you a very long time to craft this and that's kind of the point I really do like the idea of an ultimate glass cannon ring, and yeah, I think it is super duper good, and this is probably one of my favorite ones in the whole video. So the next item is going to be a necklace, and this is supposed to be the ultimate ultimate endgame necklace. This is the Void of Despair. It requires 1 Sword of Destruction, 3 Lockets of Darkness, 5 Shadow Runes, 1 Released Energy of Space, and 1 Binded Energy of Time. This necklace is beyond broken and as you can see is incredibly difficult to craft, but that's kind of the point. It gives you 2,400,000 attack, 30 crit, 5 speed, no defense, and 2 million HP. So essentially, this is a beefed up version of the Binded Energy of Time. And if this item is supposed to be one that only the hardcore beyond endgame players go after. It is very hard to craft. A Sword of Destruction is incredibly hard to get. And then you have to use both orbs to craft. And then also Shadow Runes are pretty rare. That is the point of this. And yeah, I think this is a great addition to the game because it gives players who actually put a lot of time into the game something to constantly grind for. It gives you so much stats, it is very well rounded. The only thing that's really missing is defense, and yeah, I don't think it is too OP. 
I mean, it is pretty OP compared to anything in the game, but compared to anything in the game, its crafting recipe is way, way more difficult. So let's go over the next item. This is gonna be the ring, and this ring is supposed to be the ultimate, ultimate ring in the game, like how the Void of Despair is the ultimate, ultimate necklace. So this is known as the Sphere of Divine Grace. It requires seven divine plates to craft, five light runes, three presidents, one binded energy of space, and one released energy of time. I think I, I said the orbs backwards, but the crafting recipe is on screen. And it is beyond broken as well. It requires max level, of course. It does 1,100,000 attack, no crit, 10 speed, 40 defense, and 3 million HP. So this ring is so so good it is supposed to be somewhat the ultimate piece of defensive gear at least ring wise and the miner's fruition was the ultimate offensive ring i really really do like how well rounded these stats are and the main reason why the sphere of divine grace is not a necklace is because if you think about it the sphere combined with miner's fruition would be ridiculous so basically you have to choose do i want ultimate offense or do i want well rounded gear it is incredibly, incredibly hard to craft, especially with those seven divine plates. The reason why I chose divine plates for it is because it would give people a reason to go back to Nessa the Colossal, and also it's just because the name, the, the names lined up, I thought that'd be kind of fun. And yeah, very, 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 very hard to craft, but it's also very, very powerful because of it. So there is one last item we're gonna talk about, and this is supposed to be an ultimate weapon upgrade to the infinity. This is known as the Elemental Catastrophe. It requires one Infinity to craft, one Light Rune, one Shadow Rune, one Azure Rune, one Hurricane, one Snow Queen, one Flame God, and one Life Rune, and then also two Fallen Time Fragments and two Fallen Space Fragments. So, this is very, very good and is supposed to be an upgrade to the Infinity, and of course it is very hard to craft because of all the runes you need, and yeah, I think 4,500,000 damage would be a nice, fair upgrade for a crafting recipe of this difficulty. So basically, what this is, is if you get infinity and you want to keep grinding for something even better, you can, but it's also not beyond better than infinity, so players don't have to go for this. But in my opinion, if you already have infinity, this crafting recipe really isn't that bad to get. You'll probably already have all of these items by the time you get infinity. And yeah, I absolutely love the icon for it as well. And it's supposed to just be like a little bit of an upgrade so you can be even more powerful. Anyways, guys, those are all of the items that I've come up with. I think these would all be really cool additions to the game. Comment down below which ones are your favorites. Also, make sure to be checking the feedback channel of Astral Studios every now and then because I might be putting some of those in there every now and then. I'm not too sure yet, but do make sure you look out for that. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one. Bye.